Today marks a wonderful celebration in the Catholic faith, the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We remember today that Mary, when the end of her life had come, was assumed body and soul into heaven. God saw fit to bring her to the side of her son and exalt her above all humanity. It is fitting to see both the greatness and the simplicity of this occasion. Mary was not honored because she was powerful or rich or popular or clever or any other reason we tend to associate with being honored. She was not taken from the earth and crowned with the stars themselves for being the best at anything, but rather because she was probably just a teenager, she said yes to God when he called her. God doesn't think and act like we do. We give medals and prizes to those who are the best at everything. We give the best athletes Olympic medals and the best minds get Nobel Prizes. But what God wants most from us is neither our athletic skill or our minds, but our unwavering yes when he calls us. Mary probably would not have won in the Olympics over time. She was a poor girl in a poor part of the world. She probably wouldn't have gotten any prizes at all, but she said yes to God and we still celebrate her to it for this very day. Please stand join us singing our gathering hymn found in your gather book number 886, Immaculate Mary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Father. We all know our moms are very, very special, special gifts that God gives to us. They care for us, they feed us, they comfort us. When we have a, a wound, they put a Band-Aid on it. Our moms are always loving us and, and caring for us, and we in turn love our moms and we honor them. That's true of our moms here on earth, and today as we gather as a church family, we also remember our mother in heaven, Mary. She too loves us and cares for us, and she wants to bring us all to Jesus. So today as we celebrate the feast of her assumption, we want to honor her, and the best way we can honor her is by doing what she did, and that is saying yes to God's will in our life, to doing what God asks us to do even when it's hard, especially when it's hard. For the times that maybe we haven't done that, for the times that maybe we have looked for shortcuts and haven't looked to do what God asks of us, let us ask God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. 
Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul, into heavenly glory, grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers of her glory. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened, and the Ark of His Covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky, and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman above to give birth, to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave her birth to a son, a male child, destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert, where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now how salvation and power come in the kingdom of our God and the authority of his anointed one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ, then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he subjected everything under his feet. The word of the Lord. Be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believe that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to, to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise that he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Today, with great joy, we celebrate one of Mary's feasts, the feast of her Assumption into Heaven. In fact, it's such an important feast that the Church calls it a Solemnity, which is the name given to the greatest, the most important feast of our Church year. The Assumption of Mary into Heaven is one of the dogmas of our Church, and a dogma 
is an official teaching that has been defined as a truth of our faith. And there are four dogmas regarding Mary. Mary is the mother of God. Mary is ever virgin. Mary was conceived without original sin. And Mary was assumed or taken up body and soul into heaven at the end of her earthly life. You know, as we think about this Feast of Mary's Assumption, I think we find a key to understanding today's feast in St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians that Grace read for us this morning. Reflecting on Jesus and on his resurrection and what it all means, St. Paul tells us that Jesus is the beginning of a new creation. Because of Adam's sin, all die. Because of Adam's sin, the gates of heaven were closed. But what was lost by Adam's disobedience has now been restored by the obedience of Jesus. In Jesus' resurrection from the dead, we rise from the dead. Because of Jesus' obedience to God the Father, the gates of heaven are open again to receive all who have died in Christ. The plan that God had for us from the very beginning, that we would live with God forever, share life and love with God forever, was forfeited, was lost by our sin. But in Jesus, that wonderful plan of God has been restored again. St. Paul tells us that Christ, that in Christ, everyone shall be brought to life, but each in the proper order. Jesus is the firstborn of this new creation, and then those who belong to Christ. And reflecting on this, the church tells us that Mary is the first human being to experience completely what it means to be saved, what it means to be a part of this new creation of which Jesus is the beginning. We are born into this new creation. And who should be the first in proper order? Would it not be Mary, who was the first person to believe in Jesus? Think about it. Mary believed in Jesus even before she saw him, when she said yes to the angel Gabriel, who told her that God had chosen her from all the women of the world to be the mother of God's son. And remember Mary's response to the angel? Let it be done unto me according to your will. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Through Mary's yes, Jesus came into our world. Mary is the mother of the Savior of the world, and she rightly is the first person to be born into the new creation that her son Jesus has ushered into the world. She's the mother of our Savior. We ask ourselves, what does it mean to be saved? What is it that we need to be saved from? Jesus saves us from sin and the consequences of sin which is separation from God, eternal separation from God in death. Through Adam's sin, we became separated from God, lost his friendship, refused his friendship. But through Jesus' obedience, we are reconnected to God and to the wonderful plan that God had for us at the very beginning of creation, and that is that we share life and love with God here and now, but also for all eternity. Jesus' resurrection is our resurrection. And Jesus was raised from the dead body and soul. And so to our resurrection is not just the resurrection of our souls, our spirits, but one day of our bodies as well. You know, when we bury the body of a loved one, we express our faith at the cemetery that on the last day, when Jesus returns to hand everything over to God the Father, the graves will be opened and the bodies of those who died will be raised and will be joined to their spirits in heaven. The dogma of the Assumption of Mary tells us that when Mary's earthly life was ended, she being the first to experience the salvation that Jesus has won for us, was taken up body and soul into heaven. Because of her unique role in salvation history as the mother of the Savior, corruption did not touch her body. She was the first to follow Jesus into that new order that St. Paul speaks of in his beautiful letter to the Corinthians. Mary was the first to experience what we all, by God's grace, will experience. Freed from sin, we will be freed from the consequences of sin, which is eternal death and the decay of our bodies that comes with death. We will one day be in heaven, like Mary, body and soul. Jesus was raised from the dead, body and soul, and we will share in a like resurrection. That Mary is the first believer to experience what it means to share completely in Jesus' resurrection is a cause for joy and a reason for hope for all of us, because in her we see God's plan for all of humanity to restore everything in Jesus. And so with Elizabeth on this Feast of Mary's Assumption, let us exclaim, blessed are you among women, 
and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. And together we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now let us stand and in prayer we turn to God our Father. For the Pope, the bishops, and all those who lead the church, may they say yes to the will of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who govern the nations of the world, may they care for everyone, the great and the lowly alike. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have little, may Mary's example be an inspiration and her intercession be a blessing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For mothers and fathers, as God has called them to raise families, may they always respond yes to his will. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of vocations, may our archdiocese, parish, school, homes, and hearts be fruitful grounds for vocations. We pray especially for seminarian Michael Batts, information at St. Mildred, and sister Tracy Horan, novice with the Sisters of Providence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dying and the dead, especially those who die this day, may they be ushered away to be with Christ in paradise. The intention of this mess is Chief Sir Donatus Dubu. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, in your kindness, we ask you to hear the prayers of your people. We pray that through the intercession of Mary, we too may seek to do your will always, knowing that it is a wonderful will for us. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare our gifts for the altar, please join in singing from the Gather Book, number 889, Hail Mary, Gentle Woman number 889 in the Gather Book. Mm -hmm.
Let us stand in prayer. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his church. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts aflame with the fire of love constantly long for you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today, the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your church's coming to perfection and a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Together in song, let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, with all the clergy and all your people. Remember your servant, Chief Donatus, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Mark, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. stand and join together as God's people and we pray the very prayer that Jesus has taught us our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join in singing our communion hymn found in your gather book, number 102, Holy is Your Name, number 102 in the gather book. <clears throat> 
Please join in singing both verses and refrain.
Heavenly Father, you do not show yourself in strengths, but you delight in making yourself known in our weaknesses. You did not choose a queen in a great palace to be the mother of your son, but you chose Mary of Nazareth, who responded with a generous yes. For this, you have raised her up above all and crowned her queen in the heavens. We thank you for all you have accomplished in her, and we ask you for grace in her, following her example. We ask this through your son. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing from your gather book, number 879, Hail Holy Queen, enthroned above, number 879. 